on this week's horror timeline we're kicking off our Oktoberfest of horror that's right it's gonna be five solid weeks of horror timelines well it's it's gonna be four and one non-horror timeline that's that, that's related you'll see it it'll make sense when you see it but i'm gonna be doing some pretty big series including the one that you guys all voted for earlier this year uh, which will be out on halloween and this one which you guys have requested quite a bit it's gonna do we're doing the hatchet series this classic throwback series was meant to feel like one of the old school horror series. Let's see if it has an old school horror continuity, meaning that it doesn't make any sense. Or if they took a new school approach to actually having things kind of make sense. We first ventured into the swamp back in 2006 with Hatchet, which kicks off with Mr. Kruger and Son being killed in pretty brutal fashion. And it's Mardi Gras. Since Mardi Gras traditionally falls somewhere in February, that's at least a month that we're set in. Candyman shows up, and our group of tourists, including Harmony and Frank, head out on a swamp tour. Even though they get warned against it by that local guy, the cabin in the woods called the Harbinger. They learned about the legend of Victor Crowley, who was accidentally killed by his father, and his ghost still haunts the woods. Their boat crashes, and they flash back to young Vic, whose dad is Jason and we see Vic get killed, and our group finds the old Crowley house. Unfortunately, Big Vic is home, now also played by Kane Hodder, as he starts the violence in glorious practical fashion. And let's see that again, because it's pretty awesome. <laughs> And you know what? I'm already going to get the uh, monetization restriction because of adult content uh, for violence, so I can show this as much time as I want to. Bullets don't work against him, and when they check out Shapiro's license, it expires in April of 07, so it's pretty likely that we're in real time 2006 here, although I guess it could be 07 as well, I suppose. His birth date is 1963, which would put him at 43 if it's 2006, which I guess looks about right. Big Vic makes short work of the group, so they decide to fight back. They set him on fire, which only stalls him. They impale him next, which I guess seems to kill him, but come on. You know better. He returns, having killed Ben, and preps to kill Mary Beth as the movie ends. A sequel came four years later with 2010's Hatchet 2, which picks up immediately where the last one left off, so we're still in 06. Victor appears to have had a facelift, but so did Mary Beth, as she looks a little more Jamie Lloyd. She's rescued by the old fisherman from the first one, and goes to see Reverend Zombie, who reveals that Victor's dad had an affair, so his wife cursed the baby, who turned out to be our Vic, who goes on to kill lots of people, including Iceman. We also find out that Mary Beth's dad was one of the kids who were a part of Crowley's death, and they plan to go in and get her family's remains. We meet Justin, Sean's twin brother, Mary Beth's Uncle Bob, played by genre writer and director Tom Holland, the man that gave us Fright Night. I will. I'll, 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 I'll get to it. I promise. Eventually. They gather a group of mercenaries, including Leatherface Number 3, Brett from Parks and Rec, Random Lloyd Kaufman, and there's even an offhanded mention of Leslie Vernon. They head into the swamp, and Vic starts doing what the Vic be doing, and Zombie reveals that Uncle Bob and Big Trent here were the other kids there when young Victor died, and if they get killed, the curse is lifted, and Victor will rest. There's more killing and mayhem as Justin joins his brother, Trent gets curb stomped, and Uncle Bob is next, but whoops, that wasn't her real uncle, so the curse isn't over. Vic kills Zombie, and Mary Beth gets to drop on him and totally destroys his head with some gunshot for good measure. So after three more years, the trilogy was complete with 2013's Hatchet 3, and I don't know why, but I just love when movies keep a simple number after the title. 
we again pick up right where the last one left off in 2006 with Mary Beth and even with no head, Vic still got some kick. But how, how, how does he see? I get it, he's a ghost. You don't need to call that out in the comments, I know, it was a joke. He gets sawed in half and she makes it back to town. Billy Peltzer is here and he has this calendar, which doesn't show the year, but those days of the week line up with February of 2013, not 2006. So that seems like when we're set for all three since they take place over the course of about three days. I know Shapiro's license showed that it expired in 07, but it's pretty easy to explain it as he was an extremely shady character, so it's most likely that he just had an expired ID with him. Stretch shows up, as does Andrew here, so I guess the boys were triplets. They make a comment that one of the victims looked like him, but there's no mention of brothers, so Andrew's just a, a, a new character that happens to look like Sean and Justin. Victor heals up and starts killing again, and he looks a little different once again. And then replacement Jason shows up. They say that they need to get Thomas Crowley's ashes and give them to Victor in order to end the curse, while the entire police department wages war on our ghost and loses. Turns out that Captain Spaulding has the ashes, and surprise, Ben is still alive. Oh. No, he's not. Galligan gets waxed. Amanda gets uncapped. And Mary Beth gets impaled, but but manages to cover him in his father's ashes, which breaks the curse and dissolves him. Mary Beth then finishes the job, and her fate is left up in the air, but Andrew survives. So four years went by, and Adam Green surprised everyone by filming a fourth entry in Secret. At a 10th anniversary event, they shocked the audience by then announcing that it was the premiere for 2017's Victor Crowley. This one kicks off in 1964, and this doesn't look like Satellite of Love, does it? We get an early view of the big fella, and I'm not sure if it we knew the exact date before, but we find out that young Vic died back in 1963, so just one year later, he became a massive killing ghost we see here. We see stories of his killings from 71, 76, 82, 84, 98, 02, and we see Amanda's story and is dated 06, and in the last film she said that her article was published not too long ago, which seems to indicate that the previous trilogy was indeed set in 06 or 07, but then this article seals it. The events of the first three films are dubbed The Massacre in Honey Island Swamp and is dated February 27, 2007, meaning all of them take place in February of 07 confirmed, which means Shapiro's license was not yet expired, but the sheriff's office has a calendar that was off by a few days. We see a talk show and they say that the killings were 10 years ago, so we're now in 2017 and have a solid timeline for all four films. And Andrew was back, and he apparently has DNA links to two of the victims, so it seems that Justin and Sean were relatives after all. David Wong is here, and there's some info showing Lewis, Misty, Vernon, and Ben all missing since 07. Angela and her penis are here, and Andrew gets offered $1 million to go back into the swamp, and our wannabe filmmakers follow, along with Doofy. Andrew's plane goes down in the swamp, and a YouTube recording of Victor Crawley's curse from Reverend Zombie revives him, and he's right back to his grisly ways, with most of the characters trapped on the plane. Scott Barnes calls. Ew, Scott Barnes called me? That guy has some really bad timing. With only three people left, Dylan sacrifices himself to push Vic into a jet engine, ending the movie although a mid credit sequence reveals Rose and Andrew survive, and that Mary Beth indeed survived the last film and is ready for more. So there you have it. It's four movies that actually tie together really well. Continuity works uh, works pretty consistently, especially when you consider that this entire, uh, the, the whole first three movies take place over the course of like four or five days. Um, and that they work together pretty well continuity-wise, except for, except for that calendar really is one of the only things that, that stands out as being incorrect. But overall, it, it, it works really well. Um, 
and when you watch them all together, one, two, three, four, um, it, it's like watching one long movie. Um, it flows pretty well. I enjoyed all of these. I had a blast watching them. They were a lot of fun, um, really enjoyable, um, great violence, some really great effects in there, and uh, some good cameos by old school horror favorites. So I, I love these, um, and uh, you should check them out if you haven't seen them. They're, they're a lot of fun. They do feel like an old school throwback with just some modern twists and everything that that make it work really well. Um, really enjoyable. Uh, let me know what you think of these ones down below. Let me know what you thought of this video down below. Let me know what you want to see this Halloween. I mean, I've already shot them and watched them, and so, you know, it's not like I'm going to change anything. But let me know what you would have liked to have seen. I mean, I already know one that you wanted to see because you voted on it, and you're going to see that in just a couple of weeks. Um, check out my patrons over here. These guys uh, will contribute to the channel. So I say thank you to all of them. They are the heroes here. You guys are also heroes for watching this video and watching all my videos and um, sharing them out on the various uh, social medias that you got. Uh, obviously, I always appreciate that. Do the liking and subscribing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next week for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye.